If you decide to travel west of the mainland kingdoms of Gilanor, you'll come across an entirely different continent, Zaya. On this land, a collection of different ruling houses form the kingdom of Great Kurend, and though there is a relative peace, that wasn't the case for its entire existence. This tale is about a mage named Zarek, and how he rose to power to ultimately lose it all. Just before we start the video, I just want a quick word on the pronunciation of Zarek. Uh, I've always known this character as Zarek or Chambers of Zarek, but apparently it's pronounced Zerek, so in the video I may say Zarek or Zerek, but let's get straight into the video. Roughly 1,000 years ago, there lived the great and terrible mage who ruled with a fist of iron and brought about a time period known as the Age of Strife to Curend. Zerek, ruthless and power hungry, subjected everyone he could, only stating that the weak deserve to die. There's a common theory that we're told about by the Archaeus wizard Ectomy, one that states that the true identity of Zerek is actually King Shazi in the seventh. This all stems from his conquest of Curend, in which he took control over much of the land, and his obsession with the Dark Altar having spent most of his time in the Tower of Magic to perform experiments on citizens. He also oversaw the construction of various new sections of the Tower, though it's mostly believed it was solely to aid on his experimentation of his subjects. The King was actually killed in the Battle of the Concourse five decades after his conquest, and his body was never recovered. It was his own Elder Warriors that performed a coup d'etat, supposedly killing the King and putting his reign at an end. Well, at least that's what they thought would happen. What actually transpired next was a few short days after the murder. Zerek appeared, and anyone who saw him stated how he had a similar appearance to the late king, and rumours began to run wild. Rumours whispered from one person to the next about how because of the late king's obsession with the Dark Altar, he had somehow used its power to move his spirit from his mortal body into an incorporeal one, which allowed him to gain massive power and emerge victorious, transcending death and achieving immortality, considering he did rule for over a hundred years. Achieving immortality was only possible due to the Tassakal granting the knowledge to Zerek, but for what reasons? Honestly, no one knows. The Tassakal don't even speak of the reasoning, only referring to Zerek as the Great Betrayer, and being insulted by even hearing his name. After all, this gift was the reason he could live on and slaughter thousands of people. With this power, Zira killed the rulers of the five cities and united, albeit against their will, Corend under one banner, claiming the land to be his. While his power was great and beyond measure, no king can rule alone, nor could he trust human informants. After all, that trust was misplaced in his earlier life, no. What Zerek needed was a soldier who had unwavering and unquestioning loyalty to him. So much that they would obey every single command without thinking about it. That came in the form of the Lizardmen. Secretly created sometime during the 37th decade, they formed the bulk of Zerek's army and helped him bring in the Age of Strife over Curend. They would sweep cities and farms, kidnap citizens for Zerek's brutal experiments, and some records even exist that suggest that the experiments are what caused the lizard men to be created. It was also during this time that many refugees fled Curren to get away from Zerek's brutal regime, and they would flee south, beyond the Kebos lowlands and form the Kingdom of Arlamor, which I have covered in a video that I will link in the description. During the 40th decade, Xantha, who was Zerek's closest comrade, had achieved a breakthrough in the study of teleportation, and amplified Zerek's powers even more, allowing him to perform feats previously thought impossible. This led to the creation of the Zerek Talisman, which allowed for him to teleport all across the land instantly. Thirty years later, a resistance group called Hacks, or Humans Against Zerek, attempted to storm the Tower of Magic and defeat Zerek, but failed, with their losses counting to around 200 members. And as you can see, Zerek's grip was tight and his reign was brutal with no end in sight. That was until four years later after the failed rebellion, a farmer witnessed an act that would start a revolution. You see, there was a young farmer named Bern who lived a relatively simple life. 
whilst evading the eyes of Zirik at any cost. But that all changed. On the 312th day of the 47th decade, Bairn witnessed an act so horrific that it ignited something inside of him. While he worked his farm on that fateful day, he witnessed the Lizardman guard murder a child in cold blood, unprovoked. Immediately flying into a fit of rage, he slaughtered the Lizardman in front of the entire town as witnesses. And in this moment of triumph, he called for others to join and fight back the Lizardmen oppressing their town. And so, they did. A revolution had begun. People would take up arms and start to fight back against Zirik and his army of lizards, pushing them out and beyond of the kingdom, and into the Kebos lowlands, where the lizard men would make their homes in the swamps. During this revolt is where the temple surrounding the Dark Altar was destroyed as well, severely weakening Zirik as it cut off a good portion of his power, and so he was forced to flee into exile, to try and plot his return. The revolution began and ended in just seven days, and Bairn was crowned as King Bairn I and ruled for three long decades, while Zirik began searching for alternative means of power. With Zirik's temple destroyed, the key to Zirik's immortality was lost, and so he and the rest of his followers travelled to Mount Quidamortum, where his artisan, Tecton, built a massive underground temple for him, with a small, unstable altar being built to try and mimic the power of the Dark Altar so Zira could once again be immortal, as it allowed the Dark Altar's power to reach beyond where it could previously. Though it's not entirely known who followed Zira to the mountain, journals found in games suggest that it was Vasa Nisterio, Tecton, his council, a creature keeper and many of his servants. This temple was capable of harnessing not only the power of the Dark Altar, but the power of the cave magic from the crystals embedded deep within which pleased Zirik greatly. Though, as power hungry as he was, he didn't want to share, feeling fury when others of his entourage began to use the power to aid themselves. He ordered Tecton to demolish the temple, though Tecton only disabled it, on the off chance Zirik would change his mind. Tecton tried to teach Zirik how to use the cave magic without the temple, but failed, which upset him. Zirik eventually took Tecton underground and gave him a new form, and enhanced his anvil teaching him how to repair his new body. Tecton noted that he could no longer utilise the crystals in his new form, though he did not mind, and believed that Zirik wanted his strength, and not his intelligence. Within the hollow chambers of Zirik, the mage conducted extensive experiments just like in his past life, causing massive dramatic changes to the flora and fauna around the mountain. He had several stray dogs that he continued to experiment on endlessly. Through these experiments, he produced a mutadial and a meat tree, not something you want to find your presence under during Christmas. To his surprise, the mutadial was pregnant and produced a second. More and more of Zirik's followers found their way to his compound and made camp, and the day came where their glorious leader came down to visit them. He produced the green tonic and ordered everyone to drink, boasting how it would make them stronger and healthier. Though all that happened that night was these poor folk would find themselves mutating and changing into lizardmen, forever subservient to Zirik. One of his main entourage, Vasa Nisterio, was appointed as Zirik's high priest, but he was driven mad from gaining a new form, attempting to usurp Zirik and demanding that he be worshipped instead, though Zirik turned him into four crystals to be forever bound within the chamber. Eventually, Zirik and his remaining followers encountered the Guardian in the deep and defeated it, attaining even more power though they quickly left as Zirik sought greater ambitions, with his new high priest leaving a journal documenting the events that had transpired. Zirik's activities over the next hundred years are largely unknown, but it's implied that he didn't have a form to control and lingered about aimlessly, scheming and plotting. That was until Xantha once again got involved. I'll give you a short version of the events that we're involved in, but I'll go over the quests in detail when I do my video on Corrend. Xantha plotted and began setting his plans in motion, orchestrating a series of events intended for Zirik's return. This was by leading the treasure hunter Veos to him and using a proxy to allow Zirik to control him with bursts of dark energy. And though Zirik commended him for his ambition, he had given up on Kurend and explained how he had found another way to gain more power so no one could stop them. Though he did sense our presence, and he ordered Xantha to dispose of us and head to the far south once the deed was carried out. But as always, we defeat Xantha and barely live to tell the tale. And that's the last that we saw of Zirik and Xantha so far. So 
So what can the future hold for our poor Zirik? His empire crushed, his chambers handsomely looted, and the plans for his return squashed, apparently. Zirik very clearly states that he's going to the far south, and with the announcement of Varlamor, I imagine we'll be seeing Zirik once again before long. Could he be linked with the assassination of King Kandor Hasidius? What exactly is Zirik searching for in the great lands of Varlamor? Only time will tell, but I'll be sure to keep my eyes peeled to tell you as soon as there's news. Happy New Year guys, and thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please do like and subscribe. I've got lots of stuff coming this year, and I'm really excited to share it with you all. But as always, thanks for watching, and see you next time.